Okay. I think we're live. Are we live? I do not know. Are we, Are we live now? Are we rolling? Are you? Are we rolling? I don't know. Are you rolling? Uh, maybe. I'm not rolling. Damn it, Dylan. That's you a, had one fucking job. I am rolling. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Welcome to Nonstop right. Debate. Yeah, 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 whatever. This is Major Ego Nonstop Debate. We're going to talk right. about Danganronpa because it's a cool-ass yeah. game. And we like the characters. Most we of like them. We like the characters. Most of them. Most yeah. of them. There's a few. Some, there's a few. Some that are make be considered underneath popular opinion the best character in all of Danganronpa. But we'll get to we'll that get... later. Oh, yeah. We're not even a minute in and we're already hinting. Fun, fun. Fun, we're fun. Get, we're gonna get fucking crucified. That'll be fun. Uh, that's, but that's, what, that's where the fun's at, Dylan. But we're gonna start things off nice and simple today. Because we're going to start with... The blandest of all three of the protagonists, <laughs> Makoto Naegi. I don't know Naegi. if I would say blandest, but yeah, <laughs> we're starting with Makoto, boy. Yeah. Naegi, it's only fitting. as the fan base calls him, which, I don't know, I th maybe it's just me, and I like calling people by first names. I, I know him as Makoto, when I see people call him just Naegi, it makes me kind of like, huh? But, you know. Whatever. I'm with Dylan, though. I'm with Dylan in this one, because then he also has a sister, and then I have the question, which Naegi are you talking about? Yeah, there's that, too. Which, yeah. I should mention off the top, that neither of us have played... Dang and Rampa, another episode, and I don't think neither of us have plans to do so at any point in time currently. Um, right. It's technically a side game, as far as we know and are concerned. Swish swish. Quotation. Right. <laughs> uh, and our rules on the matter with when we judge characters, we judge them on their game only. We don't rely on side materials such as the manga, Danganronpa Zero, the anime, the uh, future arc, or the despair arc, or any other side material that counts. We only count them in their game only and on their canon appearances. So, that means they have to stand on their own without the use of their supports. So if so you're a boring I, character I, I, in one game but a great character in the other game, well, sorry, we're going to make fun of you for being a boring character in the one game. Yeah. That's, uh, thank God the way this series is built up, most characters don't live through the first, uh, one game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, starting off, we're, yeah, we already said at the top, it's Makoto Naegi, is who we're gonna start with. So, we're gonna go in a bit of an order with each game. We're gonna start with the pro tags, and then we're going to cycle through all the important characters going through in order of case. So... For example, like next week, or whenever the next episode of this comes out, I don't even know. Uh, we we're will still be debating at... either bi-weekly or regular, uh, just weekly. Yeah, we're still so debating on that. If you're seeing the next episode next week after this episode comes out, well, hey, we made our decision. Um, <laughs> yeah. Next week after this, we will be looking at Miss Sayaka Mizuno. And then after that, we will move on to Leon, so on and so forth. We're going to go in order, and we're going to cover each character through each season game swish swish quotations uh but yeah by the way major fucking spoilers yeah we're going to be breaking down the game each game in order of case so we're going to be talking about who dies and who murdered and who gets executed and who the masterminds are and yeah so if you've never played Danganronpa, and we should probably put the you're fine. Why we should the probably fuck are you put this here? in yeah, we should probably put this in the description also. Spoilers, if you haven't played Danganronpa, do not listen to this podcast. We because, will absolutely ruin the game for you. Yeah. If you don't care and you're never gonna play it and you just wanna hear some opinions, uh sure. I sure. mean I would still rather you played it because honestly these games I are amazing. Uh, a lot of I don't know, it worked out for you, Dylan, when I spoiled the entire game before you started playing it. Yeah, but that was years ago, and I yeah. honestly probably had you tuned out for most of it anyways, and I don't even remember yeah. half the shit you said. <laughs> yeah, well, fine, fuck you too. <laughs> Alright, so to start off, we're going to talk about his design. We're going to go over Makoto's design. We're going to go through everything we could think of to talk about for each character. 
uh, we're going to start with their design, what we think. So, Jared, let me ask, what do you think of Makoto's look? It looks like you with a case of bad bedhead. <laughs> and a dumb fucking antenna. <laughs> fucking pro tag cow lick. Good. The, uh, the Agoe? <laughs> yeah, if it if that triggers you, by the way, I'm never going to call it whatever it's called. It's always going to be the dumb pro tag cow lick to me. We're going to have so many jokes that you guys were going to not understand. We really do not give a shit about the dang and Rampa fandom names of everything. Yeah, we I call it Ugo Hayes. He calls it the fucking pro tag cow lick. I we we really do not care. And in case you're wondering, because we are obviously Danganronpa fans, uh, Jared has already been through all three games. At this point, I am currently nearly done with V3, but I was already mostly done with V3 by the time we decided to start the channel. So, playthrough yeah. not going to happen unless a brand new Danganronpa comes out. Then expect maybe a playthrough series, because both of us are going to be new to it at that point. But Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go through some more depression that way. <laughs> You're going to get super depressed, dude. Jesus. Yeah, instead of one party getting depressed, the other person's also going to get depressed this time. <laughs> Mainly me. So, as far as design goes, he's... Yeah, he's just really basic. Yeah, like, compared to the rest of the cast, he's going to lose the contest of spot the pro tag. Yeah. he <laughs> He's just super basic looking. He's got his... He's got, like, a hoodie on... He's got like a hoodie jacket on and then he's got a dress jacket on over that. Uh, and he's just got some regular old red and white sneakers. Yeah. Um, hey. I wouldn't say he hey. looks bad. I definitely don't think he looks bad. He looks fine. He's just, he's not flashy. He's far, he's far from the worst design character for Rapa. That honor, in my opinion, goes to the Hajime. But, yeah. <laughs> Even Hajime is not really that bad. He's just simple. Like, the pro tags aren't badly designed. They're just not flashy they're just very simple looking you know they're just supposed to be dude they're just supposed to be some guys yeah just some person who just got plucked into the street because like makoto spoiler alert he's the ultimate lucky student but that's not really who he is he's well, the ultimate hope i when i was going through the wiki to pick up some extra like stuff to put in here i noticed that too he's still technically classified as an ultimate lucky student right because apparently what being up? the ultimate hope is not necessarily his official ultimate title that's just what everyone calls him because he has this like undying hope determination about him does that make hajime the ultimate future though hmm <laughs> <laughs> but um that's a god uh, that's a that's uh that's a case for another time but yeah i would uh his design is not something i would like write home about but i'm not gonna sit there and like that's fucking disgusting Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. Yeah, no, he's, yeah. he's fine. I don't mind his design at all. Like, I would say, like, Makoto is, like, one of the, like, uh, weakest design characters in the game, but I still give it, like, a 6 out of 10 of the design. It's not that bad. Yeah. It's just that when you get to the his freaking profile as a character, he's blanker than a blank piece of wood. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, th I get what you're saying. Right. So, yeah. Uh, I don't I don't mind his look at all. I think he looks perfectly fine. Honestly, it's... I don't really... trying. I'm trying to think. I can't really think of any character design out of all three games that I really dislike. Even the more simple ones look good. Uh, Hafume? Why do you always bring Hifumi up to me and make me hangry? You always do this. Every time I'm like, no, I can't think of anyone that I actually hated. And then you're like, oh, what about Hifumi? And I'm, I just get angry. I just I just break my mouse in my hand mid-click. Now I gotta buy another one. What have you done? Hey, at least you <laughs> learned your lesson. Hey, at least you learned your lesson and only buy the $20 cheap ones. Yeah, true. No, Hifumi's fine. I don't actually right. hate him that much. I just, I just like to shit on him during my first playthrough of Trigger Happy Havoc because he just looks, he looks like the guy that you just want to be mean to. <laughs> right. And then he's yeah, got the personality that makes you want to be even more mean to him. But, but yeah. that's a, that's a story for another time. So for Makoto, 
Well, we already saw his ta talents for pretty much. Uh, yeah, his his deal. role is uh, he's the pro tag. He's a pro tag. Yeah. We're we're gonna cover all the major role characters too, between the pro tags, the allies, the rivals, and the regular cast mates. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Makoto's a pro tag. He is ultimate lucky slash ultimate hope student. Um, yeah. We have death on the show notes, but he never dies, as far as I know. I think does he die in the anime? In one of the animes? Uh, no, he lives in. Well, by technicality, he dies in the meteor shower. Yeah, I guess he dies <laughs> in the meteor shower in V three, which I have not finished yet. But I, I know who the mastermind is because I figured it out. But I am right at the beginning of chapter six, so I haven't started. Right. I haven't officially discovered who they are yet. But I, I myself know. Because I figured it out early, <laughs> which I'm sure is not that uncommon among the Danganronpa players. Right. I'm Dil really not Dil that connected to the fan base. I j I only right. know so much. So I, I I'm like kind of connected to the fan base. I try to distance myself from the fan base because let's all face it: if you're part of the fan base, you guys are kind of rabid for a bunch of certain characters. I am not gonna sugarcoat it. Well, Some of you guys really like these characters to death that's gonna I be a lot of that. fun trashing the fan base and then we're gonna send them this podcast and get mobs at our houses that'll be fun yeah good luck i don't have a house <laughs> he lives in the street in a cardboard box yeah um cardboard box, uh, the cardboard box being 80 foot of uh, 80 foot 40 tons of steel but yeah sure <laughs> no, it, ex it explains a lot anyway <laughs> um we'll Let's move on to his character, which, when we say character, we mean, like, his personality from, like, a writing standpoint, and just, like, generally how he, like, communicated and acted, right? Right. So, oh, man, it's kind of hard for me to remember. He he was very much That's like Shuichi <laughs> and Hajime, wasn't he, where he's just, he was just really passive. No, I was going to say Hajime was the more aggressive of the three. He didn't really take much shit. That's uh, definitely true. Sui Suichi was more of like, he has dimma depression, so... <laughs> dimma depression. It's like regular depression, but it has a nine foot tall hat. <laughs> yeah, but he got rid of that hat in chapter one, so... Dang, you're right. <laughs> he got rid of the hat, but he kept the depression. <laughs> right. But, um... Makoto was just... For what he is, he was the first game's protagonist. He He was serviceable. His personality, I would basically say, it's g generic JRPG or uh, visual novel yeah. pro tag. He's your, he's your basic guy that you can latch on to. You don't want like, you like you don't want to see the guy die. You don't want to see the guy fail. But as a person, you probably cannot connect to him. Yeah. You're supposed to project yourself onto Makoto, which is weird because when Makoto gets into the second game, spoiler alert, he's one of the few people who actually get to be in multiple games. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of weird seeing him have a personality a little bit, but well, it's we'll because get... it's just like with Shuichi in V three. You, he starts off very cookie cutter pro tag, but as the game goes on and things happen, he starts to kind of sprout and change because he's experiencing all this like hardship and shit alongside you, the player that are experiencing right. it with him. And just like Makoto, you're kind of growing attached to everyone around you and you're learning more about everyone and you're kind of like becoming more invested as Makoto is becoming more like of a character, you know? Right. They it's right. it's the same thing with Hajime and Shuichi too, I noticed, is that you just they start off very basic and very cookie cutter, but as the game goes on, they start like they start more of their like inner personality starts to kind of come out it's probably because the cast members start slowing off dying and all the interesting characters yeah, get all, axed the, right all the, the depressing <laughs> shit that happens yeah, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. um i do say he has the most iconic no that's wrong yeah. yeah i honestly i love i like hajime's i love shuichi's makoto's is still probably the best one yeah, he puts more of an emphasis on the no than anything else. Yeah. No, that's wrong. Whereas, like, Hajime was on, like, no, that's wrong. And 
Suichi is just like, that's wrong! And then Kaede was like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> Poor Kaede. Kaede... Kaede came for the fucking Starbucks and the coffee, so... <laughs> yeah. And, uh... Yeah, if you're wondering, we're probably gonna do her and Shuichi in the same episode. Certain things right. like that we're probably going to pair together. Like, we're probably gonna have... Uh, like, Monokuma, for example. We're probably going to do him and the Mastermind of ha Trigger Happy Havoc together in one episode. Just right. because it, it would probably be easier that way. Same thing with... Uh, Danganronpa 2 will probably cover Monokuma at the end with the Mastermind. Because Monokuma is different in all three games, and we were already kind of planning on covering him in all three. Just because he's different, there's a different set of rules. He's not extremely different, mind you. But he's different yeah. enough that I think he warrants being covered each for like each game. Um, right. And we'll probably pair him with the Mono Cubs in V3. And we'll just cover him yeah. and the Mono Cubs. We'll just go over what's different about him in V3. And then we'll just focus on the Mono Cubs for the rest of it. But yeah, right. expect certain pairing of characters as we go on. Because it would just be easier that way. Especially with a lot of the characters who die early on. Um, and when we say pairings, we do not mean shipping. <laughs> Shut up. We know who you are out there. Please, We've seen the please, fan art. Please stop. Please get your mic out of your mouth. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> God. I had to bring it up. <laughs> you fucking... Jesus. You fucking brought it. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> God damn it! Character person. We we were talking about Makoto's fucking personality. You went on a tangent about Monokuma and pairings. I just had to go in. <laughs> no, I think the most. Trying to get back on topic here. The most notable thing about Makoto is that he's, I think I said it already, I did, I said it already, he's extremely hopeful, and that's why everyone calls him the ultimate hope, is because no matter what bad shit was happening in Trigger Happy Havoc, he was always trying to pick everybody up and keep everyone moving forward, and at the very end of the game, when everyone is literally just given up, like the final group of survivors that make it out, uh, they literally just give up right at the end. And you, as Makoto, have to shoot hope bullets. Swish, swish, hope bullets into them and their, their depressing statements. And you have to try and yeah. give them the enthusiasm to keep moving forward back. You don't need no Super Saiyan power like Hajime does to yeah. do that either. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to talk about Hajime and Taka and they're just random fucking Ultra Instinct transformations, dude. God, those are gonna be Gotta fun episodes. Japanese. Gotta love the Japanese. <laughs> I know. There's no better uh, way to signal an entire personality makeover than to just change their hair. <laughs> and try make their eyes literally on fire. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Taka's like, eyes were always on fire, though. Yeah. Man, fire way too red. much fucking energy. Right. <laughs> but, but then, um, my personal take on the uh, personality, because. We'll, because uh, the difference between me and Dylan is, is uh, Dylan has not seen a very a lot of anime. I have seen mountains of anime. I'm very but... I'm very picky about the anime that I watch. I like to watch very specific things that I know I will enjoy. I don't really branch out to like other things that I'm like, right. oh maybe I'll like this. I don't I don't like to waste my time with things that maybe I'll like. I like to I see something and I'm like, oh that looks good and I'll watch it and I'll enjoy it. But right. I don't. I don't go out of me, my way I, to look for things like Jared does. Yeah, uh, I eat that shit up, man. <laughs> <laughs> you do. I I find that niche shit, man. It's the good stuff. But um, but yeah, he's he's basically the generic stereotypical anime protag. If you've seen him, if you've seen him in a, like one anime, he's like more comparable to like the people like Deku for My Hero Academia. He's very yeah. he's very bland. He's very basic. He was hopeful naivete. It's just the setting of Dang Rampa 
is super fucked up, and he it's, has to it's come the into the relatability it. that they they go for. They keep the pro tag usually fairly simple as character, so that you can relate to them. Right. But it makes you feel like you're in their shoes, which right. I think which Trigger is Happy Havoc point. does a very good job of. I want to say right now. Right. Because they really make you feel because you don't know what to expect exactly. Like, I went into Trigger Happy Havoc knowing that it was going to be a murder game run by a sadistic evil bear. But I, like, I went in knowing what to expect, and I was still surprised when the first murder happened. I was like, oh, this is... I was not prepared for this, and I thought I was. <laughs> you yeah. know? I Yeah, and my experience is I've already played, like, detective things. Like, Danganronpa is, like, the most recent detective thing because i'm a big ace attorney fan so when i saw something like a death flag right away i saw sayako getting friendly for me i'm like she's gonna fucking die <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was an obvious it was an obvious death flag for me but i was just like well i'm not gonna spend my time with sayaka so yeah but the problem with makoto is is that you really don't get to learn that much about his personality wise because if if you go throughout the entire game, you're mainly more into the other interesting characters and stuff like that, but you're looking through the eyes of Makoto. Makoto is just basically just some anime pro tag guy who was just lucky enough to be in this school. And they're, and in the game, they run that joke to the fucking ground of how lucky slash unlucky he is in the school, and it kind of becomes kind of annoying from a personality standpoint. Which he later becomes like his own person. He becomes like a sidekick to Kyoko, and his personality develops from there. After he's like solved a few cases, he's got some confidence in himself, and then he he stands his ground to the mastermind, tells them to fuck off basically, and then he convinces everyone besides Togami because you can't convince Togami. Yeah, fucking Togami, too much pride. Yeah, too much pride. I do and, like uh, though. Because uh, the one time that you really do get Togami to, like, change his stance is at the end when, like I said, everyone's given up and you have to shoot your your hope bullets into the fucking survivors to get them to wake the fuck up and stop being depressed, basically. And I do love, because the thing he says to Togami is he, like, turns Togami's pride against him, where he basically tells him, like, hey, man, you can't be depressed. You're a fucking to you're a fucking Togami, man. The Togamis are proud. They're not depressed little bitches. And who's gonna... You have to keep getting up and rebuilding your fucking family fortune. You know, the Togamis aren't gone because you're still fucking alive. So, you know, get your ass in gear. And Togami's like, bye, George. I think you're right. <laughs> like, I, To be clear, I was smart. never gonna fall into... To, to be clear, and I was never going to fall into despair anyway. Yeah, he I fucking don't plays it off like he wasn't depressed. It's like, yeah, okay, whatever, dude. You fucking liar. So who's your older brother, Togami? His name was Seto Kaiba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Half yeah. expecting him to just, like, deal out a blue-eyes white dragon, and Makoto's like, what's that? And he, like, snatches it up, puts it back in his pocket. He's like, nothing. D uh, uh, shut up, idiot. And then he goes back into the library. <laughs> I do like, uh... I do like some of the character moments Makoto has with, like, like analyze, analyzing, like, different situations and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the next point that I was about to make, was that I don't think he really gets enough credit. Makoto is not stupid. He's very yeah. smart. He... Yeah. There were a couple cases in Trigger Happy Havoc that I figured out pretty quickly, like... It's like case Whoa. three especially. You, you told me even. I figured case three out in record fucking time. But, he figured it out, like, sentence one out of Celeste's fucking mouth. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I yeah. gotta lie to make this She was like, oh, no, I've been bonked on the head. I didn't see my attacker. And I was like, oh, yeah, that sucks. And then, like, the next minute she was like, hey, maybe we should go upstairs. And then she heard us. And then she screamed and we all went running up to her. And I was like, are you putting us on a wild goose chase right now? And then she kept moving people around herself, like, instigating the movements and where everyone was going to be. And I was like, you, you're doing this. You're up to something, aren't you? And then when the murders yeah. happened, I was like, well, I know Celeste is behind this. And then once I got all the pieces put together, I was like, all right, yeah. It was like every clue I got, I was easily able to just fit into place. And I was like, I see how this fits and like trails back to Celeste. Right? Right. So right. yeah. like Makoto was able to eventually figure that out. Yeah. The point I was trying to make is that despite some of the cases I figured out pretty quickly, uh, Makoto catches on 
very quickly also. Right. Like, I wouldn't, granted, he's I wouldn't not say supposed he... to catch on that quick because writing and the story and all that, but, like, he he does get some clues from, like, Kyoko. I think the only time Makoto was a real slow boy was in the very first murder when Kyoko was just like, hey, what about those uh, those numbers on the wall, huh? That's kind of weird. Makoto was like, yeah, weird. And Kyoko was like, maybe you should, you know, fucking look at it upside down, you idiot. And Makoto's like, upside down? And then he was confused about that for the next 20 minutes before he finally realized, oh. <laughs> like. <laughs> but, by the way, if you, did not, if you did not figure out the case of the first murder mystery by looking at the numbers, congratulations, you are officially hero tier dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Yasuhiro Hagakure. Yeah. A true living legend. What's he a legend oh, for? Weird. We're not sure, but he's he's living at least. That's that's yeah. that's half of it. That's something. Right. Yeah. That's gonna but be a like, fun um, episode. I was gonna say like Makoto is as a person compared to the protagonist, he's the least intelligent because Hinata basically had to do his own thing. He really didn't have much help in the story. Fucking Suichi's just as fucking flat out doing all the fucking work yeah. in D3. Yeah. Yeah. So he's definitely the smartest. Like, this guy is carrying the entire game. Yeah. Makes you wonder why he's not fucking dead. Makoto, so... got, Makoto got egged on and helped along by Togami and Kyoko. Um, right. Especially in case two where, oh, in different circumstances, <laughs> Kyoko knew what was going on and togami was a massive dickhead and do knew not, exactly what on. do not get me started on case two we haven't gotten that far yet i'm gonna <laughs> rant for like an hour and we're not even on that yet yeah we're gonna save that for obviously the togami episode God. but um <laughs> you guys are in for a fucking treat when we get to the togami case two episode jesus yeah, that uh, podcast is going to be fun. It's oh probably going to get flagged and taken down for excessive swearing. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> and that's going to be saying something. I'm the one with the sailor mouth. God. Yeah. But, um. He's. Where are we? Are we at overwhelmed written character? Uh, we're still talking about his personality. We're, we're talking. You, you were mentioning about how he. We were talking about how smart he is. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, we keep getting fucking sidetracked. <laughs> that's, hey, that's fine. I, I like these ramblings. They're... <laughs> he And I will give the game credit. I am not as smart as I think I am sometimes because there are a lot of these cases that were kind of obvious and I still had no fucking idea until the game had to spell it out for me. Like, uh... Right. Case 2. No. Well, Case 2 was... Case 2 is different, had... because Case 2, because of fucking Togami, was literally, like, unsolvable until you got very specific details from him that only he knew. Uh, and Kyoko no, also. Yeah. Kyoko yeah, I was, was say like, the key... there was no way you could figure it out unless Kyoko gave you that clue of, like, oh, maybe Chihiro's not a girl, you know? Yeah. That was that the moment where is... it flipped and you start figuring it out, but... Right. No, right. There, there are plenty of cases where... The, I think there was at least one case where Makoto caught on pretty quickly. I can't remember which one it was. It was either case five or four, but Makoto it caught was case on before like anyone else did. And even Togami had it wrong. And Makoto was like, no, see, this is what happened. And he explained it. And even Togami was like, fuck, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was case four. That yeah. was case four you're talking about. Yeah. I knew it was one of those. Two. I, I remember specifically because you thought uh, Togami had a, had a situation where he could have made the lock, locker room situation because oh. you really wanted Togami dead. Yeah. But best girl Sakura killed herself. So <sighs> so sad. So depressed, dude. <laughs> but um. God. Yeah. But like his personality, like relationships with stuff like that, uh, with like someone like Sayaka. He like. He likes to carry on, like, the memories of other people along with them. This is a very evident yeah. with his personality. That was, with, like, that was the, the case one. That was a big turning point for Makoto was when he said, I'm never going to forget the people who died. I'm always going to carry them with me forward. Right. I think that was the moment where I turned because before that, 
I was kind of poking fun at him because he was kind of a dummy. And I was just like, like, even with the Sayaka case, like I said, when Kyoko mentioned looking at the numbers upside down and Makoto was still confused. And I was like, boy, you, are you (laughs) stupid? Are you actually stupid? How the fuck did you get into this school? Who are you? (laughs) Lucky student, Dylan. Yeah. And there was the point, there was that point, like I said, where he mentioned not forgetting the people who died and carrying them with him. And that, I think that was the moment for me specifically that I kind of flipped and I was like, you know what, boy? You are right. You are right, kid. I'll cut you some slack. You're still stupid, but I'll cut you some (laughs) slack. (laughs) His personality is far from forgettable, though. He's kind of a... He's he's kind of like he's in the good boy category, not the goodest of boys, but a good boy category. Yeah. As far as the cookie cutter pro tags go, I would definitely put him up there with one of the better. Cause he's a very solid character. He's very down to right. earth. Like I said, he's not a bad character. He's just very simple, just like his design. Yeah. There's not a whole lot to him, but there isn't a whole lot about him that is negative either. He's just a right. very relatable character, and that's what you need in a game like this, because you need someone to really, like like I said, put you in the shoes and get you in the game, you know? You need something right. immersive. You need someone that you can really see through the eyes of, and Makoto is a very good character for you to do that. Right. So. Because... Because out of this uh, 14 students of whack jobs and weirdos, Makoto was the most level-headed of all of them. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely. One could argue Kyoko, too, but at the same time, I would say fucking Kyoko liked touching corpses, so... (laughs) She she did indeed, yes. (laughs) She was only the one brave enough to do it. And with that, uh, we're going to take a short break, and then we will be right back, and we will go over how well we think Makoto was written as a character over the course of all his appearances. So, uh, yeah, we'll be back in a minute. See you then. And now it's time for Ego Theater. Do we do our own separate recordings for the Ego Theater? I guess. What What do you want to do for Ego Theater? Uh, separate recordings. That way we can have our own jokes in there. Okay. Great. I don't fucking, I don't fucking know what to do for mine. I think I was just going to talk about penises or something. <laughs> uh, hair penises? <laughs> hair penises? Oh, you mean the Protag Calic? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine not being the protag of a fucking anime game. This post was made by the dumb protag Catholic game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they clearly all got their inspiration from Yami Yugi. Let's be real here. Yami Yugi is only so powerful <laughs> because he killed 18 other anime protags and stole their Catholics. <laughs> Fucking right. That's why his hair is so extravagant. <laughs> is because it's just What's... that's not his hair. That's a bunch of anime protag cowlicks glued to his head, and it's turned him into what... a god. What's his natural hair color, Dylan? <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know that's a really good fucking question. I was my brain. You literally divided my brain into fucking like. A goddamn! It's imagine playing like Civ, right? Playing Civ Six. Right. Like you divided my brain into different nations that all began warring with each other because one part of my brain said red, and then the rest of my brain was like, no, blonde, and then that <laughs> part divided and was like, no, it's black, you idiot, and then they all just started fucking fighting. So you know what? Uh, I really could not tell you what Yugi's actual hair color is. He's got so much fucking shit in there. To is... quote self or P4 star, hmm, looks like you'll never lose a game of Spot the Pro Tag. <laughs> well, yeah, because that stupid joke of that picture of him standing in the crowd of people and they all look boring and dumb, and then you've got him with his stupid hair and you're just like, geez, I wonder who the star of this fucking anime is. <laughs> 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 fucking god. Stupid. Fucking. Stupid Pro Tag Kelly. I hope, I'm sure I'm gonna trigger somebody by calling them that and i'm 
Whoever you are out there, I'm never going to give you the fucking satisfaction of calling it whatever it is that it's called. It's always going to be a cow lick. I'm always going to call it a cow lick. I'm never going to call it anything else. And if that triggers you, my job is complete. You know, honestly, I don't think we that need was to, good enough. I don't. Yeah, I don't think we need to record anything else. That, that was good enough for its own ego theater. That to might be as honest. well have been ego theater. Yeah. <laughs> And we're back. That was I'm, a. Uh, mm. I'm uh, I'm out of breath actually to, from laughing kind of too hard, but um. I'm out of breath from all the love we were making. We were making love. I consider that hate fucking. Why don't you look me in the eyes during? Because I'm blind in both eyes during that situation. Oh, that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a this is a podcast, by the way. There podcast not intended for children. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should put that in the description right under the fucking spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert, not intended for children. All right. Well, let's get back in to speaking of children. Haha, <laughs> segue. Ah, you can't see it, but I'm doing finger guns right now. Um, by, te- <laughs> by technicality, Makoto is 19 in the game. <laughs> He's under 20. I can still call him a kid. We are talking about Mr. Makoto Nayegi still, uh, because this is just one episode, and we haven't really discussed anyone else in depth yet. Um, We make make allusions to other characters, but when we get to the uh, characters that we want to break down, they're going to be longer. Makoto just, by proxy... Makoto doesn't really have much to talk about, to yeah, be honest. which a lot of the pro tags are going to be like that. We'll probably have a lot more to talk about Hajime and Shuichi, but yeah, it's... Oh, definitely Hajime, yeah. but Hajime is going to get like two videos by technicality. Technically but... two, yeah, because the Mastermind yeah. video is technically a separate character. And that one's mostly going to be dedicated to Monokuma because there's only so much we can talk about about the actual fucking Mastermind. Right. So, but yeah, we're not talking about the masterminds today. We're talking about Makoto. So let me, right. let me ask you a question here, Jarrett. From a writing perspective, from like a critical perspective, uh, how well would you say Makoto was written in the story, uh, in the plots? On a scale from John, uh, from John Snow to Timmy Turner, <laughs> I would say he's definitely a Harry Potter character. <laughs> Wait, what? What is this scale? I have no idea. Is Timmy Turner supposed to be the better written out of the two, or is it... no, it's the worst written out of the scale? Oh, okay, <laughs> that, from best to worst. <laughs> Why is Timmy Turner on this list? Because he was like, ba- I, he was like, uh, badly written characters. First one to come to mind, Timmy Turner. Let's go with it. <laughs> He's just such a random fucking character to throw on there. <laughs> All right. I was like, I gotta pick a Game of Thrones character or someone <laughs> way out there to make the skill work. <laughs> Christ. But no, I would say, I would say as a pro tech, he's fine. He's not. He's not. Like I said yeah. before, he's nothing to write home about. He's fine. He's not standing out, writing... but he's not awful. Yeah. He's just like his design and his character. Honestly, he's just. He's good. I think he's written well. I don't think it's outstanding, but it's right. it's solid. And for considering this is the first Danganronpa, that's probably what they were going for. The, obviously, right. they'll shoot for the stars with their pro tags in the next couple games. But Makoto is a good starting point, I would say. Right. Just like the rest of this game. Yeah. So the main draw, the main draw of this game is obviously like the death game, but the other draw is the the wacky zany other characters. That's not the protagonist. Yeah, yeah. So for, sure. for so that's kind of like the protagonist curse in these games. You're not going to be written that well compared to the rest of the cast. Well, like I said, it's not that they're written badly. It's just that they're written right. simply. Well, well, we'll get to the badly written characters in Danganronpa. Don't you fucking worry, guys. Yeah, 
No, we'll get to that. There's a couple bad written ones coming that I am excited to fucking shit all over. It's going to be a fun time. Oh yeah, uh, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> but um, but then but then we have like game like the then we have the greats in the Ding and Rampa uh, Ding and Rampa series, and then they just kind of just outshine Makoto. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said. Makoto is more there so that you have someone to, like, kind of, like, witness the game through. Right. So, like, a lot of the attention isn't supposed to be on Makoto. It's supposed to be on the characters that you're interacting with. And I think a big upgrade to getting to know the pro tag better was what they... Oh, excuse me. What they did in V3 with Shuichi. Where you get to see his sprite as he's talking to people so that you get to really see how he's feeling also. You only really yeah. get to see Makoto and Hajime during the class trials. Or special CG artwork. Yeah. Which, those are great, also. But, Let, they're very few and far the, in between. They're not as common. Let's get, this, let's get this out of the way, because we're never going to like be able to talk about this again. Talk about CG art like that. Mm-hmm. I fucking love the style of thing in Rumble. It's super unique. It's very good. I it's very I know that they mainly changed the color of the blood from red to neon pink to avoid like um what was it to avoid like the rating hassle type yeah. stuff yeah because I think right. if I re- recall the pink blood the red blood would have made it mature and they made it pink to keep it at T for teen ah uh, no it's still mature Dylan oh, because because of the mondo. imagery <laughs> because of mondo. What's what's his basic vocabulary, Dylan? Oh, right, the swearing. Yeah, I thought you were saying because like Mondo was violent. I was like, no, not really. He fucking, it's all sprites. He punches Makoto out at the very beginning. Which can we talk about that for a minute? Can we talk about what a bitch Makoto is? He takes one punch, he gets knocked out cold for three hours. <laughs> God damn! Like, is is Mondo a big guy? I know he's not as big as Sakura. Yeah, but I is think he like Mondo like. I think he's like a six foot guy. I don't think he's not that big. He's like the same still, height as Taka, if I recall. Right. Let me hold on. For let me let me look. No let me look at this. Hold on. Let me look at this me small fucking, boy. Let me fucking look at this guy. Where is he? There he is, Mondo Iwata. How tall is this guy? He's six two. <laughs> okay, you were right. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me go back. How tall is Makoto? Makoto's five three. Yeah. All right. That's that's fair. This this boy is tiny. I still made fun of him for just taking a punch and getting knocked out. Cold, he's, as, yeah, he's as tall as Kokichi. Think about that for a second. <laughs> oh God, poor Makoto. Imagine being as tall as Kokichi. This post was made by the six foot two gang. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> and Kokichi at least could took a fu- take a fucking hit. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Kokichi got fucking abused in that game, dude. Jesus. Makoto takes one punch and he's fucking out. <laughs> yeah, I I always thought that was funny. I laughed my ass off when you hear the punch sound effect and everything goes black and then it just cuts to Makoto waking up in the infirmary. I thought that... No, he wakes up in his room, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I laughed so hard at that, dude. I, that shit was so funny to me. I was like, wow, one <laughs> one and done, huh, Makoto? You weak bitch. You got knocked the fuck out, man! <laughs> God. I was merciless. I was so mean to Makoto up until that point where he was like, no, fuck you. I'm going to remember everyone who died because I couldn't save them. I was like, damn. Maybe I was a little too mean to this kid. He's got it. He's got it. He knows what's up. So I think it was mainly you still venting from the bullshit that Togami put you through, so you were still kind of just angry. <laughs> no, I, I took that out on Hifumi. <laughs> and then Hifumi died and then I not had no one else to make fun of it. <laughs> not saying you didn't deserve it though but still <laughs> just saying saying good but yeah well, Makoto plays well like as a written character just bouncing back and forth between like the other characters yeah he's, a, he's supposed to be the straight man to be able to be like 
to the rest of the other characters wacky zany personalities yeah can we talk about makoto and hero's interactions real quick and how fucking legendary they are every time you speak to hero in trigger happy havoc it's just some dumb bullshit that just makes you laugh and makoto's yeah. reactions to all of it is just it kills me man it's so funny <laughs> yeah yeah. Because I feel like a lot of the time, Makoto is just as confused at the shit that Hiro says as you are. So you're like right there with him when Hiro says some weird shit. And you're like, the fuck? And then you look over at Makoto and Makoto's looking back at you like, the fuck? <laughs> like. <laughs> you heard that too, right? <laughs> <laughs> this dude's fucking crazy or something, dude. I don't fucking know, dude fucking aliens taking his hamburger i don't know what yeah, the fuck's going right on here says makoto is visibly the nicest to yasuhiro out of all their fellow survivors but often finds his eccentric personality confusing right which i was gonna say he's like, not alone makoto was never mean <laughs> makoto was never mean to hero and i was just like i don't think makoto was yeah, ever did. mean to anybody i think like he was indifferent to most of, like if anything he was indifferent to certain people he let Togami push him around a lot. Right. He was very passive to the way Togami treated him, which was understandable. Even uh, Junko, when she comes out, right. before she goes off and fucking kills herself, which... <sighs> God. We'll get to that. We'll, yeah. we'll, get, to we'll, we'll that. get to that. We'll get to that atrocity he, of a fucking written character. He even tries to talk Junko down off the ledge, basically. Like, right. he, he even tried to save Junko. Even though right. she put him through all this shit, he still tried to save her. And, right. you know, that's got that speaks volumes. Right. Because, like, that's, you know, that's the hero thing. That's, yeah. that's what you would expect the pro tag to do. Right. So. And, he, and he's one of the very few characters on Danganronpa where he doesn't have a tragic backstory. Yeah, a lot of the fucking characters in this series just have some fucked up shit happen to them before they make it to the killing game. And Mak Or Mekon. Yeah, fucking Mekon, dude. And Makoto is one of the very few that he was literally just a normal kid, just living a normal life, and some random dude stopped at his house and was like, hey, would you like to go to Hope's Peak? And he was like, huh, uh, uh, sure, I guess. And then next thing you know, he was at fucking Hope's Peak Academy. <laughs> And everyone just labeled oh, him Ultimate Lucky Student because he's the one who won the draw to come to the school. <laughs> God. Yeah. Could you fucking imagine just some dude coming to your door and he's just like, hey, son, you won a draw. You're coming to the most illustrious high school in the world. And you're just like, what if I'm not smart enough to go to that school? And they're like, ha ha, we don't fucking care. Pack your bag. <laughs> God. Can't say no to this school. Because you'd be disgraced for all time. <laughs> Which, and I, when I looked at the wiki to get a little more info on Makoto for this episode, I didn't even fucking know about this. It says he was caught up in a bizarre series of events on the day of his selection, which ended up catching a jewel thief and burning the selection ticket. <laughs> so the day he got selected some random bullshit happened that led to him somehow catching a jewel thief but it also burnt his selection ticket okay that's uh that's weird yeah i <laughs> it's really funny because <laughs> that sounds like some fucking nagito shit god Oh, we're, we're going to talk about Lucky Students. We're going to get to Nagito when we do the second season. Oh, boy, we're going to talk about I know, Nagito. I know we're not going to cover the anime and shit, but I just want to, when we get to Nagito, I want to talk about the scenes he has in the anime because they are fucking hysterical. Dude, <laughs> they are so funny. I can't get over him punching the number on a vending machine and going, ah, jammed, just my luck. And then a fucking truck lands on top of the vending machine and spits his candy bar out. And he's like, ah, oh, my luck is turning around. And then he just fucking leaves. Like, <laughs> I can't with this guy, dude. He's so hilarious. <laughs> There's a reason he's my sprite on this channel, okay? There's a reason he represents me is one, because he's fucking crazy. And so am I when I'm having a good yeah. time, having a good time. 
Uh, we're not gonna talk about that one in four trillion chance that you got in Danganronpa one, that one time, right? Do you want to get? Do you want to talk about this now, or do you want to save it until later? We're gonna save that till V three because fuck you and everything <laughs> about that situation. Oh god, it's gonna be a while, but short and sweet uh, explanation. When I was playing V three a couple weeks ago. Uh, I basically had like a 94% repeat rate chance on the Mono Mono machine, and I got two lucky chances. I got a lucky chance, and then I got a lucky chance off that lucky chance, and then both of those were new items, and the next two items I got were also new after putting regular coins in, and Jer lost his shit. Because apparently, I have a better chance of getting struck by lightning twice than doing that. So, that's fun. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck, man, you think I could be the ultimate lucky student? You think I could go to Hope's Peak Academy? Fuck, this is, this is the reason why I don't want to play Warhammer with you. <laughs> I'm going to lose the matches all the fucking time. <laughs> God, it's alright. I, I lose my luck when I play Risk of Rain. Well, that's Risk of Rain, Dylan. <laughs> God. Alright. Well, let's go ahead and move on to Impact. Uh, how sure. Makoto impacted the other characters, how the other characters reacted to him, responded to well, him, how they treated him, how they treated him after the game was over, things like that. I don't know. Tell him, Nayagi. <laughs> well. <laughs> God. If you got that joke, congratulations. You're part of the Togami fan club. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, no, like, yeah, Makoto has impact. I would say out of the protects, he has the most impact. Yeah, from what I can tell from the scenes of the anime that I've seen, and because I haven't played the after game on any of the Danganronpas, uh, honestly, I probably won't, just because I don't have much of an interest in the whole dating aspect of the game. Like, I, I like to... I like to think about who I like, and, like, when there's certain pairings that are cute together, like Maki and Kaito, I'm like, oh, I'm all for it, dude. Fucking, let's go. But actual, like, going into the game and, like, trying to date the other characters is, like, that, that's not what I played the games for. So it's, you know, it, it can stay in the after game. I'm, I'm glad it's there for the people who want to do it, but it's not really for right. me. You know, maybe I'll... I've been thinking of maybe doing it in V3, just because I like a lot of the characters in V3, and apparently you get, like, special screenshots or something for doing it. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll go through it yeah. in V3. Maybe I'll just look it up. Maybe I'll just look up the screenshots and stuff. I don't know. But. Right. Yeah. No, as far as I can tell, between the anime and the games, uh, everyone seems to like Makoto. The only person who was really cruel to him at all was uh, probably Togami. And even Togami, by the end of the first game, had, like, a level of respect for Makoto. Which you can see clearly by the end of Danganronpa 2, where they're clearly, right. like, buds. You know? Right. So... They're, like, when you say Togami, I'm like, Makoto was Like, Togami wasn't that cruel to Makoto. No, he, he, he treated Makoto no. like shit. He treated everyone like shit, yeah. to be fair. But Makoto especially, he was kind of hard on. Uh, Toko. Who? Oh yeah, that's right. That joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of the other characters we're gonna have to get to later because oh my god, do we fucking hate this character? There, <laughs> but there's um, a lot of characters that we have a lot of strong opinions on. Yeah, it's gonna be fun to get to them. Yeah, but um, I would say Junko treated him badly. Well, yeah, but. but like, I mean, the Junko, the Junko that you spoke to was not Junko. And yeah, so Mukuro. Yeah. Mukuro apparently secretly had a crush on Makoto before the killing game. I wasn't aware of this. Are you sure about that? Yeah, that's what it says. Right right here mm. under the... Because uh, I'm, I'm looking at his relationships tab on the wiki. And under Kyoko... Right. It says their relationship during the school years is a bit unclear. Uh, 
In Danganronpa If, it stated that Makoto had a crush on Kyoko, and Junko described her as Mukuro's rival in love, shwish wish, due to Mukuro's secret crush on him. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It is also pretty obvious that he had a crush on Sayaka. Like, he, he and Sayaka were the lovebirds of the school years, but the right. killing game... Uh, is when he really seemed to turn more to Kyoko, which it does also oh, yeah. say here, but, I mean, I didn't really need to read that to know that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was kind of obvious what happens to when what happens to Sayaka. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she was gone really early, but very similarly to the protag in V3, she... You really got to know her before she was gone, so you really felt right. her loss. And right. that was another thing I wasn't prepared for in this game. Because like Jer said, as soon as Sayaka started being nice, he was like, oh god, she's going to die. I had like yeah. read and seen mystery stuff. Like, I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan. Um, when she started being nice to me, I didn't think that she was going to die until like the day where you find her body and you go into the fucking... Um, you go into the dining hall and she's not Bathroom. there and you're like you're like yeah. oh god where is she and then as soon as that happened i was like oh god am i gonna find her dead and then i did and i was like ah oh, fuck <laughs> so yeah <laughs> feels bad man uh fun fact uh sayaka was dylan's go-to waifu in the beginning of the game <laughs> she dude sayaka is fucking adorable as soon as i saw her i squealed because i thought she was fucking cute i loved her outfit i loved her hair i was like god i told damn. you i'm psychic yeah and her fucking psychic joke is like my favorite thing ever because she was always pulling that on me and makoto both because i was like right. whoa is she actually like ultimate psychic student or something and she was like no i'm just kidding and i was like oh fuck well she's got some fucking intuition then and my favorite part of trigger happy havoc hands down still my favorite part is after she's gone and makoto makes that psychic joke at the end of chapter one to kind of like call back to it i love that that's like my favorite <laughs> moment in trigger happy havoc there has not been a moment in the other danganronpa games that has surpassed it yet it's god if we ever do episodes just like covering like games in general like right. the games overall, I will say right now that if you were unsure about Danganronpa, like maybe you, maybe you found our podcast or maybe you're listening or looking up stuff about the games because you're thinking of giving them a try and you're not sure, like maybe you don't think you'll be smart enough to figure the games out. And if you've listened this far and you're hearing this message, you probably already have most of it spoiled for you by now anyway, but give the first chapter of Trigger Happy Havoc a playthrough because I think if you can make it through the entire prologue and first chapter of Trigger Happy Havoc and you still don't think the game is for you, that's fair. Because honestly, the first chapter is super solid. It's a very easy mystery to solve. Like, it's a good beginner mystery, but the whole chapter in general is a very good introduction to the series. And if you're hooked on chapter one, then you'll love the rest of the game. Right. So one one zero three seven, Dylan. Yep. One one zero three seven. <laughs> fucking number comes back in every goddamn game, just like that fucking katana. God, that yeah. fucking katana. <laughs> every time I see the katana, I'm like, oh boy, is this gonna be part of that fucking murder again? And then it always is, and I'm always angry. <laughs> God. Ah. All right. Well. I think we've pretty much we covered everything as far as impact goes. I mean, he's again, he's the protag. He he only affects so many people. So yeah. Right. Um if anything uh if anything, if you want to uh, like my opinion on it uh from as an anime man perspective, as a protag, his impact yeah, it's stereotypical the shonen anime protagonist. He's very kind-hearted. He does. He's not like one of the big eaters and stuff like that. That's yeah, uh, obviously he's, fat. He's not, like a, he's not like a fighter protag like Naruto and Goku, right. where all he does is train and eat. Right. So. Train, eat, and fight. That's all he does. But um, yeah. as like a like a, as a, like a mystery novel protag, he's fine. 
he's he's all right. Uh, he's not he's not going to be like someone who's like well depth and 3D actualized like someone like Phoenix Wright. He's not going to be up there with those type of characters because yeah. those guys have layers and layers and layers of story upon him. With Makoto, it's like oh, he's a what you see is what you get type of character, and his impact is exactly like that too. He's like what you see is what you're going to get. Yeah. So it's... he generally just has no real like bad relationships with anyone who's not directly related to the villain pretty much everyone he comes into contact with if they don't warm up to him immediately they warm up to him eventually so right yeah he doesn't really have any bad relationships and he a lot of the people who died uh he connected with before they were gone in some capacity like minus minus all the free time that you spend talking to whoever you want makoto has moments like scripted moments with each character before they're gone like Mondo and Taka's fucking man out in the sauna. Uh, I think he has a moment. I think he has a scripted yep. moment talking to Chihiro at some point. Uh, I really can't remember. He was, there, he was there. He was there in the cafeteria when Chihiro was trying to be like, "No more fighting, guys. I gotta yeah. become stro- stronger yeah, as a person." Yeah. Uh, he was there when uh, Hina and Togami had a big falling out. He was there with uh, Celeste and Hufume Hina and Sakura, were doing their thing. You said Hina. Well, you not... said Hina and Togami. Yeah, Hina punched Togami. Don't, don't you remember? Oh, that? I do remember that. I was fucking cheering, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's late enough in the game that when it finally happens, you're so glad because you're like, God, Togami fucking needed to get punched in the face, dude. He's being a cock. He's a cock yeah. like that whole game up until the very end when he starts fucking getting it together. Right. So. But yeah, he's... Yeah. He's friends with everybody. Like said, what you, friends with everybody. What you see is what you get. Yeah, exactly. What you see is what you get. So... What do you be friends with? Well, he was even friends with Leon, and he really didn't really have much with Leon. He's like during the only. The entire he's time. like the only person who was friends with Leon before Leon died. Right. God, if anyone listening to this is a is a Leon fan, can you can you tell me why? Why do you like Leon? He looks okay. I'll get. I'll give you that. He's a cool. He's got a cool design. But if that's all you got, just uh, pro- <laughs> if you're if you've been on the channel. And if you see any of the Town of Salem villain videos, and you see the Leon sprite, I purposely label those sprites douchebag for a reason. Yeah, spoiler alert, we're not Leon fans. Me especially. I don't like Leon from a personal standpoint. From a writing standpoint, he's fine, he's whatever. He was a throwaway, and yeah. he did his job. He, yeah. Just, but, just uh, like Sayaka, he was there to kind of introduce you to what the game is all about right so yeah well before we wrap up uh with our closing arguments i wanted to cover trivia some little known things about makoto and maybe you knew all these maybe not i haven't actually read through the trivia list yet because i kind of wanted to be surprised reading through this because i don't do a lot of heavy research on these characters before this this is mostly just our like raw thoughts jer's got a lot more research and knowledge on these guys because he's seen the anime and shit but i haven't i've seen i've seen halfway through the trigger happy havoc anime but i don't go searching up information on these guys so and uh if people are listening to this podcast we are not weeby news we do not deep dive these characters yeah we only give our opinion if you want a more deep dive analysis please go to weeby news she does an excellent job of covering every one of the characters we're just a couple. We're just a couple of hobbyist writers giving our thoughts and opinions in podcast form, unscripted, unprofessional, and basically we're having a good time. Very unprofessional. <laughs> yeah, like look at our ego theater. Especially in ego theater. Ego theater is going to be our like blow off steam. Definitely have fucking fun because we're mostly just we do have like a general guideline of show notes of topics to cover, but ego theater right. we're just. We're just going to talk about dumb random shit. So. Because, because, a spoiler alert, we're going to go after each other's throats on some characters eventually. Because yeah, mo- I... Sorry, go ahead. 
I was gonna say I have some strong opinions of certain characters that Dylan absolutely loves. His name his name starts with an N, and and his last name also starts with a K. Yeah. So yeah, I have some very strong opinions of that fucking lucky boy. <laughs> so. <laughs> And by, and by the way, in my tone, you can obviously tell which part of the fan base I'm part of if I really, really dislike Komida. <laughs> <laughs> he hates us because he ain't us. But, uh... Kill, you killed Gamer Girl. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can't have them all. Fair enough. So, I couldn't have Sayaka, you can't have Gamer Girl. Couldn't have Sakura, Dylan. Fuck you. <sighs> Every time you say her name, I just get sad. It just kills my boner. Alright, so moving on to the trivia for Mr. Nyegi. Uh, Nyegi means seedlings in Japanese, and Makoto means faithfulness. I thought that one was nice. And then it's got a little bullet point that says this could reference how he spreads hope to everyone, similar to how Junko tried to plant seeds of despair. Shwish wish. So... That's fun. I kind of. Uh, what is By all lo- what is distrust? Is that what Danganronpa was called before Danganronpa? I I am not so sure. Um, I think it might have been. I think it might have been the demo. What was it say? The trivia. Oh no, that's right. This is uh, distrust was what eventually did become Trigger Happy Havoc. It was it was a game that they tried to make it first, but. It got scrapped and never released because it was too gruesome, but elements of it were redeveloped into Trigger Happy Havoc. Like, Distrust was the OG version that was going to be basically Trigger Happy Havoc, but it had, like, actual dark red blood. Uh, It was more gruesome and violent in, like, the kills and things and the the execution. If you want, like, an example, if you want an example what Distrust was going to look like, look, try to find... Leon Kawada's execution in the beta. Yeah. And it was fucking brutal. It's relatively the same, but it was more graphic yeah. than what was in the final product. It looks like it had all the same characters. Uh, some of them had different names. Monokuma was known as Phantom, and he was like a he was like a medical statue where it's like half human, and then the other half is like the intestines and the bones and muscles I... and things. I'm so fucking glad they went with the bear design. Yeah. Oh <laughs> Monokuma's, Monokuma's great. Apparently, it was always intended to be a robot, so even that fucking medical statue was also going to be a robot, so that's fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, Distrust is what eventually became Danganronpa. So yeah. Okay. Uh, in Distrust, uh, he was not shown to have a name. His name was Protagonist. Like placeholder name. So that's fun. Oh, so potentially could have been a name your own character sort of thing yeah <laughs> that would have been fun i would have liked that yeah uh the gas symbol the gas mask symbol on the back of his hood is a reference to zero from the game 999 another existing reference to 999 was mentioned by makoto in the end of the fourth class trial uh i actually don't know what that is is that another like japanese game i'm pretty sure that's definitely a japanese game i never heard of 999 uh... and i yeah, he's got, like, a gas mask on. Zero was the mastermind behind the nonary game in Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. Mm. Huh. It sounds like another, like... It sounds like another Danganronpa, honestly. It's just instead of a bear mastermind mascot, it's, like, a ghost face dude in a gas mask. So that that's cool. That's fun. Maybe we'll have to uh, give that a look at some point, too. Right. So, and I'm fucking idiot like close the, the the tab here we go <laughs> my b <laughs> let's make it down to the trivia again okay so he's one of the few characters to survive more than one killing game the others are hina kyoko and hajime what other killing game was Hajime in? That's an excellent question. Was he in a killing game from, like, what, the anime? Because I know there's another killing game in uh, the end of Hope's Peak. Well, on a spoiler alert for the uh, anime, I know he started the tragedy. Hmm. I don't know, then. Uh, in the first game, after being 
B- boing, boing. In the first game, after being given the title Ultimate Hope near the end of the game, his e-handbook profile lists his title as Ultimate Despair. This is not a translation error, as it was the same way in the Japanese text. Huh. Huh. That's fun. Why, though? <laughs> in the non-canon Danganronpa V3 bonus mode, Ultimate Talent Development Plan, Celeste challenged him and Nagito to Mahjong to test their luck. She suggested they add the Headmaster to even things out. This is likely a reference to an official art from Danganronpa 1.2, where the same event happened. So that's fine. Uh, that art book. That art book. Yeah. That we really need to get. Dude, that, that, that stuff, that, uh, the artwork in the art book is fucking amazing. The art book in the art book, huh? Yeah. Dang. That must be one big art book. Mm-hmm. Does the art book on the inside of the art book also have its own art book inside that? Yeah, it also has the gold of the katana replica, too. God fucking damn it. I'm so <laughs> mad. <laughs> Even when I'm acting stupid, Dylan, I can I make you angry. Ah, fuck. This game has given you weapons against me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Makoto appears as a guest character in Chain Chronicle Brave New Continent, which I don't know what that is either. That sounds very Japanese. God, I, I need have to play no more games. Uh, it's a tower <laughs> defense role-playing game developed and published by Sega for the Android, iOS, and PlayStation Vita. Released in Japan in July oh, 2013. Yeah. Da, 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 da. That's why we didn't play it, Dylan. It came on the Vita. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, apparently Makoto was a guest character in that. So that's fun. That's fun. Uh, and his... Oh, oh, there's a lot more trivia here. Oh, Okay, hold on. Makoto is also included in the collaboration of Danganronpa 3X... Ho- I'm I'm gonna butcher this. I'm sorry. Hokai Gakuin. No idea. No idea. Okay. Uh. Known as Guns Girl Z in the English release is a Chinese side-scrolling shooter mobile game developed for iOS and Android. Game featured an in-game Danganronpa three, the end of Hope's Peak High School themed event. Ah. Uh, Very cool. Anime tie-in. Yep. You learn more with every fucking click. Uh, Makoto appears in Mystery Chronicle One Way Heroic says the ultimate student class, being one of three designs available for it alongside Komaru and Monokuma. Ah, so his sister. Uh, the profile for the ultimate student states, you are the ultimate student. You may be the best, but you're just a student. You're not very good at close range combat. Master the various truth bullet skills and survive in this harsh world. Ah. Yeah. And now here's some stuff that I actually knew already. Makoto and Nagito Komaida share voice actors in both the Japanese and English dub. This is because Nagito's character is based on Makoto and he acts as his darker parallel. That I knew already because Jer told me while I was playing through Goodbye Despair. <laughs> right, yeah. And it's kind of, it kind of uh, it's a little bit of Nagito. It looks like Nagito beat up Makoto and took his jacket too. Mm-hmm. And I fucking told you this, Jer. Makoto is the only character to retain his original voice actor from the game for the English dub of the Danganronpa anime adaptation. Yeah, I can believe that, because I can fucking tell that's like, all the anime is just like, oh god, they're all off. I like the anime. <laughs> I, I didn't mind, because like I said, it's obvious that all the voice actors are different, but they all still sound pretty close. And Monokuma's voice right. is especially different. Like, they didn't even try to recreate his voice in the game, but I love his voice in the anime because it's very fitting for his character also. Yeah. It's like, if you didn't have the option to get his voice from the games, that's the next best thing because it's just as good, you know? Right. So. Mondo not uh, Mondo not as Kyle Herbert is still fucking weird to me, though. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, Makoto and his sister Komaru performed Danganronpa, another episode's ending theme, Progressive Zan Shin, together. So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, Makoto is one of the two characters to have a rebuttal showdown sprite, end quote, but to never actually cause a rebuttal showdown, the other being Kokichi Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, you gotta remember with fucking, and then the second game, you get interrupted by him. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right, right. Is, is it rebuttal? Rebuttal? Rebuttal. Okay, that's what I thought. 
I, I was saying it weird. I'm probably going to get flamed in the comments for it. Feels good. Dylan says things like rebutal. Rebutal. <laughs> rebutal. That's okay. Rebootal. That's okay. I used to call I used to call barracks barracks for the longest time. I did too back when I played a lot of Call of Duty because I thought that's how it was said. And then I heard someone yeah. say barracks and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That makes more sense. I was one, I was one of the kids back in the day when meme became a thing. I was one of the kids that thought it was pronounced meme. And when I said that to one of my friends uh, over Steam voice chat, she flamed me for an entire week. So, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, all right. Well, let's. that's all the trivia that's on the wiki. And I'm sure there's probably more, like, fun little things about him that we didn't know that's, like, spread throughout the rest of this wiki page. Like, the whole like, new like girl said, having a you, crush on him thing. Neither one of us knew that, apparently. But, uh... Like, if you want more details about, like, Makoto, go to Weeby News. Just trust me. Just go to Weeby News. Yeah. She makes great content. I didn't see any of her videos, but because I've been looking at more Danganronpa stuff on YouTube now that I'm almost done with the series and I'm less and less afraid of spoilers... Uh, out of all the content that keeps popping up in my YouTube, the Weeby News character deep dives is one of the most consistent things, and I'm assuming it's probably because they're very good. And now that I'm hearing Jer give it praise, also, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shrug and blindly say, "Yeah, go check out Weeby News because it's probably pretty fucking good." Yeah, that she would be the good, should be a good like. Like, if you need, like, a crash course deep dive on a character, she's probably the one you need to go to. Yeah. Maybe we should go check out some of those videos before we do the next episode. <laughs> well, I, I, I watched them all already, Dylan. Oh, what the fuck okay. you mean? <laughs> no, that probably explains why you know all this random shit about all the fucking characters. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, with that said, let's go into closing arguments, which is basically going to be our final thoughts on each character. So, Jer, let's start with you here. What are your final thoughts on Mr. Makoto Naegi? Um, my final thoughts is, like, he was serviceable, he's a good boy, ultimate hope. Uh, I enjoyed him. I liked yeah. him. Yeah. I liked him a lot, too. I'm, I'm right. pretty much just gonna piggyback off that. He's, yeah. He's just a good heckin' boy. And we yeah. enjoyed every moment that he was around. I was very excited at the end of Danganronpa 2 because it's, like I said, these pro tags are good because they're very, they're written, written, <laughs> they're written well enough to get you, like, s submerged into the fucking deep side of the pool that is Danganronpa. And... There's just good characters for you to kind of go on these adventure with, you know? And I was really sad when I was done with Trigger Happy Havoc because it meant that Makoto was moving on without me. So at the end of Danganronpa 2, when Jer told me, like 10 minutes before it happened, that Mr. Makoto was going to make a reappearance, I was ecstatic to see my bud again. So much so that he believed fake Makoto right I off the bat. I believed back. fake Makoto right off the bat, and I game over. Yes, I had to repeat like 20 minutes of dialogue to get back to that point. Yeah. So, yeah, feel, feels <laughs> bad, man. They fucking, they, they, they attacked me with my feelings, Jared. They knew I was happy to yeah. see him. That was his one and only game over so far. It's my one and only game over in like all three fucking games. <laughs> <laughs> I got fucking faked out by fake Makoto. Fake Kodo? Hmm. Mm. Mm. That's what I called him. Yeah. Yeah, he's just he's just a good heckin' boy, man. I I enjoyed Makoto. He's he's a very good character for you to like shotgun. Take the shotgun seat passenger. He's a good character for you to passenger seat. There we go. He's a good character for you to passenger seat this fucking game through with. Right. So He's not he's not terrible, he's not absolutely god tier but he's all right for what he is yeah especially at the end when he starts like really coming out of his shell and being quite a bit of a character Do that's so yeah that that's when i that's when i enjoyed him the most was when he stopped being like 
Because at that point, like, most of the cast is dead and the mastermind is right there and it's the only obstacle left because, that, like, that's the point when Makoto stopped being like, oh, geez, I don't know. And that's when he started being like, no, this is bullshit. It needs to stop. And that's when I was like, hell yeah, I'm here for confident Makoto. I'm, I'm getting to that point right now in Danganronpa V3. And let me tell you, I am fucking, I am all for. I'm a slut for Shuichi being confident as shit, dude. I love it. Because I'm so used to him being so passive and down on himself. These moments where he gets up and says, no, I've had enough of this shit. Those are the moments when I get up and I'm like, yes, my boy. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. All right. So let's let's give him a rating. And we have a rating system that we're using for these videos. Wait, and okay. I, I was not going to rating. do this rating system, but Jer insisted. I think it's really dumb. This rating system. His rating system is based off of Jello Apocalypse's rating system for everything, uh, any review he does in 10 words or less, yeah. where it's graded on a bell curve of negative 10 through 10. Doesn't mean if a negative rating is bad, it's just the ironic enjoyment of the character. Right. Where the closer you are to zero is the worse off your character so is. So if you're a, you if can you're have a dead zero, it's not a, it's not like Makoto where it's like, it's not, it's not great. It's not awful. It's just fine. No, zero means oh, no. it's awful. Negative 10 awful. is like Tommy Wiseau's The Room where it's, it's awful, but it's enjoyably awful. Right. And then positive regular 10 is the scale of like it's great it's fantastic it's amazing and it needs to adventures end game or spirit away yeah and then yeah like we said zero on the scale like dead center just means that it was awful and it needs to go fucking burn in a pit somewhere and we only have two zeros on this list so yeah there's not really a whole (laughs) lot of zeros i wouldn't even the worst character in the game in our opinion which that's going to be a fun episode to get to i wouldn't even i wouldn't (laughs) even give her I wouldn't even give her a zero. I'd give her like a like a negative one or a negative two. Yeah. So. But if I if I'm going to have to rate Makoto, I would give him a six out of ten. Yeah, I think that's fair. I'd give him maybe a six yeah. two, maybe a six point five. I right. just enjoyed him. He was, like I said about like the first chapter, the first chapter of Trigger Happy Havoc is just a great introduction to the series, and. Trigger Happy Havoc as a whole is just a solid game, and there's no other character I would have really wanted to go through the game with, honestly. Makoto's got kind of a, he's got a good boy spot in my heart, because he was the bud that I went through all that beginning of that fucking bullshit with, so. So much so that when he switched to Hajime, he's like, this is not Makoto, where am I? I I need my baby boy! Baby boy! (laughs) Yeah, I was, I repeated the cycle with all the pro tags where I was a dick to them at first and then I warmed up to them near the end and then I just fell in love after it was over. Uh, so that means you admit to being a dick to Kaede? No, I was never a dick to Kaede. I loved Kaede to death. She was amazing. <laughs> I Don't you even spin that on me, okay? You of all people know that I went into a month of not playing Danganronpa depression after Kaede fucking died because I was so upset. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you don't even have you even dare speak her name in my presence, you fucker. I will rain hellfire upon you. Don't you <laughs> dare fucking challenge me. God, we're best friends, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna be for long. You keep talking about fucking Kaede like that, you bastard. Fuck. That's fine. You. Just, you... You, you talk shit over Togami for the entire game. I'm like, Togami's not that bad. Fucking Togami's a piece of shit. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, uh... Yeah. That's Makoto. Six out of ten. Six out of yeah. ten. Six, six, six point five. Somewhere in there. He's, he's a good boy. Okay. Final rating, a good boy. And that's, uh... uh that's all there is to it. Uh, next character will be Hatsune Miku. Uh... <laughs> Hatsune Miku. God. She really, she really just is, though. She, <laughs> she, I guess she kind of is. I don't know. <laughs> I fucking, oh look, let me make sure that is who we're talking about next. It is. Okay, yeah. We're so next week, next whenever. I don't know when we're gonna. I don't know if we're doing these bi-weekly or not. We haven't fucking decided yet. It depends on how much editing is gonna go into these episodes. But uh, hour and a half of. 
voice recording. Yeah, we mostly just need like images and shit to put in for the background. So, right. Uh, maybe a couple edits during like the break for like ego theater and things like that. Yeah. Pro- maybe like give it maybe like an hour's worth of work and it's we'll, ready to be uploaded. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see, see how it goes. But yeah, next episode we're gonna talk about Sayaka, and I am. I'm so excited, dude. I love Sayaka. She is adorable. She was gone way too soon. They really but fucking... She, she's still a bad bitch. They really fucking punch you in the gut with her, because they really get you to, to get to know her before she gets killed. And you're just like, oh, right. fuck. Yeah, what we're going to do, by the but way... But that will be next episode. Because, like I said at the top of the show, we're going to be covering them in a specific order that goes along with the, uh, with the games in the cases so as we go we're going to obviously we're going to start with the protag and then we're going to move on to the first murder victim and then we're going to move on to the killer and we're going to kind of wrap up the trial and case as we go throughout those as well and then we're going to just move on as things go to whoever is involved in the next murder and the next killer and so on and so forth and we're just going to work our way through the game and the cast until we get to the mastermind so right yeah be be a fun time so be the funnest of times if ego theater in this episode was anything but a hint at yeah (laughs) hmm (laughs) (laughs) god (laughs) fucking fucking goddamn dude alright uh god I have the thing somewhere on here I don't know where it is just fucking follow major ego on shit if you want i don't know we're not fucking doing this for a living man we're just having fun if you don't want to follow us that's fine yeah. we're just making bullshit if you leave a mean comment though i will reply to it i will rain hellfire upon you <laughs> Dylan won't reply but i will start i won't rep- <laughs> i won't i won't reply i i am a troll i am a troll in the living flesh dude i live under a bridge you're not gonna fucking trigger me nothing triggers me Except for I just like except for talking shit about Coyote. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't give a shit, dude. Oh, you know what? Something, uh, something that would probably really trigger you. Sakura is not a good character. Oh, My God, fucking, how dare you? You, you're gonna burn in hell I for stopped, that one. I don't even need to do I anything. I stopped burning FBI. <laughs> I stopped. I stopped. You're a fucking monster. <laughs> Unluckily for you, I'm still recording, so. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even need to do anything, dude. You're going to go to fucking hell for that one. So, yeah. Just, you know, fucking follow fucking follow all the shit. If you dare. Yeah, follow all the shit if you want. Uh, for, I don't know. Jer, you got anything you want to fucking plug? You got anything you want to talk about? I kinda, advertise? I got... Um... Yeah, the sponsor of today's video, Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> we are I'm not just sponsored kidding. by Dollar Shave Club. That'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, we got sponsored but, um, by Dollar no. Shave Club. Neither one of us really shaves, so I mean. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Maybe that's why I, we should I almost get a sponsor. Have a, I, <laughs> dude, if we get Dollar Shave Club, I will shave my beard. <laughs> yeah, I, I will too. Straight up. All right, but um, yeah. All right. But no, I don't have anything to plug in. I mean, I'm just here for the ki- shits and kicks. Yeah, shits and kicks. Yeah. All right, well, this is D-Dog, and that's the J-Man, and this is Major Ego. See you later. Signing off. Goodbye. Get the fuck out of my house.